Hey Pythonos, it's the Super Shardio Super Show. And today, we're going to pull some shards. But first, I actually want to take a, a stop by the clan boss to see if it's going to be a 10 pull or if it's going to be 9 1 pulls. And I've actually started going after Nightmare. So we're, we're pretty consistently one keying Brutal. So now I'm moving on to Nightmare. What's in the chest today? Not a void shard. And you know what? I'm gonna do three things today. I'm gonna I'm gonna go over first I'm gonna go over the new arena team. So a lot like the old arena team from the previous episode, but I've made a slight tweak to it. If we go to the setup for a minute, I'll show you the difference in stats. I basically swapped Sun Wukong's and Foley's boots. So Sun Wukong is slower and hits even harder. And Foley is a lot faster, so it's easy it's easier anyway to um get Aostrid and Diabolist to uh to speed boost into him from the 316 speed to the 250 speed to the 192 speed. I think we don't get cut in on anymore. Also, Eostrid, it's it, it embarrasses me to admit this, but I just realized it's it's Eostrid just it's Easter. Eastrid. It's it's probably Eastrid for Easter. I know the community probably already knew this. I did not pick up on that until I saw her uh, her Easter basket animation, and then I realized, oh, of course, she's an Easter champion. She's Eastrid. Eastrid, East of Eden. So I'm just gonna run this in full auto and see what happens. We place the buffs, the debuffs. Uh, that was very fast, which is what you want to see. So let's try another one. This one doesn't doesn't even matter who gets targeted because Sun Wukong's move is going to go towards Ultimate Death Knight because he siphons off everything. It's nice and fast now. I like this. Um, let's try let's try one more against another nuisance team. This is another Sun Wukong team. Maybe I will highlight Sun Wukong just in case. And you know what I just realized? This and this is something um, this is something important to note. You really want to make sure when you're dealing with a Tormund team that you have block debuffs somewhere to not get completely messed about. All right, we got we got lucky there. Honestly, that that's the whole point of Tormund is to completely mess up your uh, your buffers. And then everything everything gets all discombobulated. Foley has a bit of uh, built-in defense against that, but many nukers do not. Like Foley happens to be one of the lucky ones who's got a uh, he's got a passive. Whenever an enemy tries to place a stun, freeze, sleep, provoke on this champion, instantly removes the debuff, then heals the champion by twenty percent of their max HP and boosts their turn meter by 50%. That's that's like a massive boost. Other champions that uh, don't have to worry about it include champions like um, Aorius. I think he's totally immune and he's a legendary. Where is he? He's over here. This guy. But anyway, I, I guess the point is block debuffs. It's very good to have in your, your starting lineup. So that's another thing I could consider putting into the team instead. I do have one champion that could maybe do that, and she is uh, a nice free-to-play friendly player champion. Um, anyway, it's uh, what? Come on, Gavin. What are you having a stroke? Dark elves. It's spirit host because she does have. I mean, she's got the increased attack that sometimes you want in your starting lineup, and she's got the block debuffs. So this is probably what I'd have her do, is just come in with the block debuffs, if I could get the speeds tight enough and I could drop Diabolus. But anyway, that's that's where the arena team's at right now. Uh, I also want to go to clan boss, and then I'm going to pull some shards, and then we're going to call it a day. This is going to be a short and sweet episode. So Nightmare, I've decided to bring along Rathalos. Um... And I think I'm dropping... Yeah, I dropped Foley. I redid his masteries. Foley is now just for Arena. 
And Rathalos Blademaster, I rebuilt him in Relentless Gear. So he'll get a bunch of extra turns. His speed is a lot faster. His crit rate is 100, but his crit damage is kind of sagging because I didn't have crit damage gauntlets. So instead I had to go with the crit rate gauntlets to get that going. I'm even kind of thinking that Eastrid might get replaced by Seeker just because he can do the increased attack on a two-turn cooldown, basically for the whole fight. Um, so he's doing turn be turn meter boosts more frequently. Eastrid, problem is, don't have a lot of legendary books yet, right? So this is on a six-turn cooldown. That kind of sucks. If I had her fully booked, she'd be perfect for clan boss. And she will be fully booked one of these days. But for now, I'm just going to go into Nightmare. <laughs> And let's see how we can do. I had Uragrim in the back of the party before because I wanted to make sure he didn't take the stun from the clan boss, but it occurs to me. He can probably avoid taking the stun anyway because he has the, uh, the buff that helps prevent that stun that I'm forgetting the name of, but it's a mastery. It's a tier 1 mastery, it's basically just, um, I think it's Steadfast. Steadfast Determination? I think that's what it's called. Anyway, the, the Steadfast Mastery in tier 1 actually counts as a buff to determine who the clan boss targets. So, when the clan boss looks at your whole party, it's whoever has the least number of buffs is the one that's going to get attacked. The Steadfast Determination, I think, counts as a buff. So basically, it's like he's got five buffs now instead of four. Um, and I also gave him that uh, Blood Shield Ring, so that every time he uses his A1, he also gets a little bit of a shield, so he's less likely to take the stun. This is important, so now we'll get into why that's important. He's the only cleanser on the team, so I want him to be able to cleanse whoever gets stunned. But I put him in the lead anyway, instead of putting him at the back where he'd be the least likely to get targeted. I put him in the lead because he's got a speed aura. I just wanted to be faster. So that is why. So you can see that they're actually making very good pace. We're doing almost a million damage per round against the Nightmare Clan boss. So a big part of that is the Tier 6 Masteries are on Rathalos, they're on uh, Xeno Blade Master. So the two Blade Masters both have um, their t tier 6 mastery. He's got War Master, and I'm sorry, I, I think I said it was the same. It's not. She has Giant Slayer because she's got multiple hits on her A1 and her A2 and her A3. She's got three hits and four hits and four hits. So you really want to get as many of those Giant Slayer procs as possible. So that's where her damage is coming from. I took Kale out for a little bit. Um, and I think I had, uh, I think I had Jamarsa in the party so that she could revive somebody if they dropped, but I figured basically by the time champions start getting knocked out, it's already over. It's, it's not going to be long. She's got time to maybe revive one or two people and then it's over. And she just doesn't do a lot of damage, whereas Kale is doing all these poisons along with Urugrim. So Urugrim does a lot of poisons, Kale has a lot of the poisons, and then Rathalos and Xeno Blademaster. The two of them just do a lot of damage on their own. So, in order to one-key Nightmare, we have to hit 40 million. So if there were a way to keep the team alive for 50 turns, like if I, say, had uh, Demitha, and then I could just bring in Demitha and Seeker and do a uh, an unkillable comp. We could stay in for 50 turns, and I'm fairly certain we'd have enough damage just from the two Blade Masters. Because they're doing really good damage now. And the Leech does quite a bit to keep them alive. The Leech, I think, is just coming from Xeno Blade Master. I don't think anybody else can play it. Anybody who's got Deacon, definitely use Deacon on the clan boss. He's OP. Because he's got that leech on his day one. I feel like I'm overusing the hat today. Because I decided I'd do this clan boss fight first. I'm pretty proud of this team, though. 
I mean, it's it's day 118, so we're we're just about ready to hit the four month mark, and we can probably two key nightmare. I don't know if we're gonna if this is quite gonna be a two key. I'm hoping it is. I think I haven't actually tried this this exact team yet against this level of clan boss, but it's the team I ran earlier this morning against Brutal, and it got 26 million against Brutal, so hopefully this should be fine. If we could get 20 million, that's a 2K. I said 40 million, I think I think the exact number is 39 million, come to think of it. It's like 39.3 million or something like that. So we're just about there. Uh, I talked about the gear on these two. They're in Relentless. Uragrim? I've got him in Regen. I have an idea that I'm going to start trying to solo with Uragrim in lots of places, but even when I'm, when I'm not trying to solo with him, I find I just put him in whatever team. In Regen. You can solo him. But you can also just have him run as a support champ in just about any team. You can run him in the lead because he's got a speed aura. I love this guy. This is maybe the luckiest pull on this account. I've, I, I get the sense it didn't feel like it at the time, and I took a while to get around to building Uragrim, but now, now I'm wondering why it took me so long. Because I think I like him better than even a number of the legendaries that I pulled on this account. I think I like him even better than Bivold, for example. Well, there goes the there goes the party. But I don't know. Jury's still out on Bivold because, of course, I haven't even six starred him yet. So twenty-four million. Yeah, that's this is a two key. I'll, I'll try running it another couple of times. But if we can get to the point where we can two key Nightmare, we then are at the point where we can get more Void shards because the ultimate chest can even give you sacred shards. It's rare. You get four random items, and usually the random items are going to be not the shards and not the books. So you get everything else. It's always a bummer when that happens, which is why our ultimate goal is to push to Ultra Nightmare, where you get a random five from this pool, and that guarantees you a book or a shard. And sometimes you're lucky. Sometimes you get both. For now... As promised, let's pull some shards. Let's pull some shards, baby. So, do we want to maybe make a wish to RN Jesus? Who's the, who's the buffed, uh, the boosted champion? It's Riho Bone Spear. So, I don't think we necessarily need her, but I wouldn't complain if we got her. Because she's she's got a cleanse. Come to think of it, this account still needs a really good cleanser. She's got a cleanse plus the block debuffs. She's kind of the perfect cleanser for that. But then if we wanted to run somebody to debuff the clan boss, I mean, look at all these debuffs. She's got like every important debuff. All of them. Completely amazing. And then her A1 even places some heals, so that's cool. And she's got a cool passive. When receiving any debuffs, instantly transfers them from this champion to the attacker. That can be fun in Arena. That can be fun against uh, the bosses. Like the Hard Dragon, you can start reflecting his poisons and his his decreased defense and his weaken. Everything just back on him. So you know what, RNG Jesus? I would very much like that champion. But there are all kinds of champions I'd like. I would like a Demitha, I think, most of all. She's just an epic. But if we pulled Demitha... We could build an Ultra Nightmare team right now. So we're getting Daywalker. He's got a cool little passive where he gets back up when he dies. Um, I think I think it was Scratch put together a team that killed uh, the Lunar Archon with Daywalker. I'm I'm hoping I'm remembering this right, and it was Scratch, and I'm not I'm not snubbing the real person who thought of this um, because you know it it could have been Bronco. I know Bronco's done it as well. Anyway, Daywalker is one of those champions that could do that. If we can reach the Lunar Archon, we could try it, but uh, right now I don't think that we can on this account, sadly. 
Centranos is a very champion-hungry area. So we got Confessor. I don't really think there's anything special about Confessor. Just another Void Rare. I'd like to get it. Another decent Void Rare, anyway. Hey, RNGesus? Cold Heart. We still need a Cold Heart on this account. Would very much love a Cold Heart. So we got Renegade. Renegade's another great champion. I think we already have one on this account, though. Um, but she's got this reset. So you can decrease the cooldowns of any skills by two turns. It can be very handy for resetting stuff from round to round. And now that we have two Renegades, we could probably run like a, a three-round comp where we use the two Renegades. Could work. Maybe Renegade is a lucky pull on this account. Hard, hard to say at this point. But come on, we want to see that. Uh, there we go. That's the right color. Ooh, it's the Skull Crown. Okay. This is a lucky pull. So Skull Crown, I mean, she needs no introduction, but I'm going to do one anyway. She places an unkillable buff on herself whenever her HP basically drops to the point where she'd die. And this will prevent her from dying. Unlike Torix, for example, who he can place block debuffs if he takes too much damage. Not debuffs, sorry, block damage if he takes too much damage, but he, he'll still die if he's hit hard enough. Skull Crown will not die. She will place this unkillable before she dies, and she will not die. She's got attacks all enemies, placing weaken, and it, it does a ton of damage. And then you got this one, attacks all enemies, places an extra hit if the target has more than 50% HP, which at the start of the round is everyone. So she is going to place that extra hit right away. She's probably going to be the campaign farmer on this account, folks. She is still on my main account, which is four years old, or damn near four years old anyway. Um, she's the main campaign farmer on that one. She is the campaign farmer on uh, on a number of my other alternate accounts too. I've, I've made a bunch and she's she's on every single one because she's so good at that role. And it's it's not just campaign farming. I mean, you can run her everywhere. Like against the Doom Tower, she clears waves like crazy. In Arena, she nukes like crazy. I mean, she's going to be awesome. Awesome, awesome stuff. Thank you, RNG Jesus, for the victory today. So we still got four to pull. Let's pull them. Another rare. And it's veteran. Already got a veteran. Probably not going to build veteran. We're getting Paragon. Paragon, the king of the cheap Paragon cheese. So... Paragon, for for those un um, unindoctrinated into the into the cheese that is Paragon, uh, you can place unkillable on yourself for two turns on a two turn cooldown. If you fully book this guy, is he worth fully booking just for that? Like there are things that you can do. I think he might even be able to cheese the Lunar Archon, but I might be wrong about that. But there are a lot of bosses that, that you could just slowly whittle down to nothing by making sure they can never kill you. It's kind of silly. And it's also super annoying when the computer does it to you. You're trying to clear a wave. Maybe you got some crowd control. Maybe you got some, um, maybe you got some turn meter control, I should say. If you had crowd control, you could actually freeze this guy or stun this guy and stop him from uh, placing his unkillable at the right time. Uh, but if you're turn meter controlling this guy, if you're in that unlucky position, you might just never be able to get through him. So, I don't know. We have him now, so we could use that to our advantage. So we got Retainer, and here's the last one. RNGesus, come on. Come on, at least give us a good epic. And it's a rare, and it's Seducer. Well, Seducer's cool, because, you know, he's um, he's got a nice sexy man chest. Maybe don't spend too long looking at the sexy man chest. Um, he's got block debuffs on here. Yeah, he's got increased defense, block debuffs for one turn. So it's increased defense for two turns, block debuffs for one turn. It's kind of the weak version of increased defense. 
Oh, if you ascend him, you get two turns of block debuffs. This can be handy against the clan boss. It's a four turn cooldown. It's for two turns. I don't know. I mean, he's all right. He's he's better if you pair him with um with whatever her name is. Increases ally HP in all battles by 25%. Wow, that's actually a really good aura for a rare. So he's got a really solid aura. This protection's really good. When he's with Temptress, places block damage on this champion, ally protection on all allies. Do we have a Temptress on this account? That's the other question. Um, and in fact, if I look here, this will tell me if we've ever had a Temptress. But, uh, and we have, we have actually never pulled a Temptress. So that's too bad. We will hold on to him. Maybe I could make a, a nice little Valentine's two-man team with, uh, with Temptress and, and Sexy Manchest Man. But, um, for now, I, I guess that's it. It, it looks like our next champion to build may well be Skullcrown. Where is she? I am looking forward to having a built-out Skullcrown. It basically means I can retire Kale from campaign farming. I've also been using Sun Wukong already for the campaign farming. He's maybe a little bit slower than Kale, but he's more reliable and I don't need a preset for Sun Wukong anymore now that I've got him fully booked. And he's my only fully booked Lego, and he's probably going to be the only fully booked Lego on this account for a long time, unless we can start regularly hitting Nightmare and Ultra Nightmare, which I'm working on, as you can see. Um, but yeah, it means Kale would be retiring from that role, which means I could probably just make him more clan boss focused, or I could make him more dungeon focused, uh, or I could even fill him out in a stun set and make him more Doom Tower focused. Not really sure. But... Uh, anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for stopping by as usual. Take care of yourself. See you on the next video.